What's up, everybody? How's it going? Uh, we are on lesson number three of my liquidity providing series, and today we are talking about impermanent loss. Yesterday, we talked about the difference between uh, V2 DEXs and V3 DEXs, um, and that was to give you a brief overview of like what the difference between the two is. And you'll notice between those those that video and the previous video, I mentioned something called impermanent loss. And when people start talking about liquidity providing, impermanent loss is typically like the big thing that comes up on in like like why you shouldn't do it or like why you should be scared or why you should be cautious about it. And and those arguments or those perspectives definitely have some value in that impermanent loss is a risk. Uh, however, I think sometimes they're overblown. And so today's lesson is to help you understand what impermanent loss is so that you are uh, equipped with the knowledge to provide liquidity while understanding what the, uh, the, the risks of doing it are. And the way I like to phrase it is impermanent loss is the risk that you are taking on in order to earn the fees that are being generated when you're providing liquidity. So like providing liquidity is a service, so you get paid for it, but you're also taking on the risk of impermanent loss, which is why you're being compensated for the service that you're uh, giving to the market. And so to start off the lesson, I wanna go back to the original example that we started with, or uh, let, let's just talk about what impermanent loss is first. And then we're gonna talk about the original example uh, that I did in video one. So a permanent loss is your, uh, the formula is your HODL bag at the post trade value minus the post trade value. And this is kind of like a complicated way of saying what we could have had minus what we have. So it's like the difference between the, what you would have had, the value of your tokens, if you just held your tokens after a price move versus what you have after the price happens when you're providing liquidity. So let's go to our original example, and, and we have a liquidity position with three HEX tokens and three USDC tokens. HEX is $1. Somebody wants to buy HEX. They put the USDC into the pool, and they get HEX out. So a person has now purchased HEX, um, and HEX has gone up to $2. Well, if you'll notice in this trade, you know originally they had three HEX tokens, three USDC tokens. Now they have less HEX tokens and more USDC tokens, but the price, is, price of HEX has increased in value. So let's calculate what the impermanent loss would be for this specific, uh, really, really discrete example. So we have our pre-trade bag and what the liquidity is, what the liquidity provider, the tokens that they have before the trade happens. And we have the uh, liquidity pool after the trade has happened. So before the trade, uh, HEX is at a dollar. That's what the ratio is saying. And the liquidity, liquidity value total is $6 because each HEX is a dollar. So that's $3 plus $3, $6 total. Afterwards, the uh, the uh, liquidity provider has two hex tokens and four USDC tokens. So this is four. Now hex is uh, now two dollars. So four plus two plus two, four plus four is eight. So you know the value that we would have had if we had held, we would have had our three hex tokens at this post trade value, which is two dollars. So three hex tokens at two dollars, which is six dollars plus the three USDC tokens, we would have had $9 if we never put these tokens in liquidity and just held them over time. But because we had provided liquidity and we have lost the token that's going up in value in this, in this specific example is HEX and HEX is now $2. Well, if our final value after the trade is $8, our permanent loss is one. Because if we had held, we would have had $9, but because we provided liquidity, we have $8. So the difference between those two is $1, which is your impermanent loss. And when you're providing lo liquidity, your goal is for the fees to out earn the impermanent loss. So hopefully through this trade, you earn more than $1 in fees. Now that wouldn't be the case because they put in $1 and the fees are a percentage of the trade that happens. So you would have earned a percent of $1. But keep in mind that a position is not this discrete or not this like closed of a system. It's, it's multiple trades with multiple people over time. So you're earning fees with every single trade. And sometimes the impermanent loss goes up and it goes down, right? So if somebody did the reverse of this trade and tried to, uh, Put, put another HEX token in to receive a USDC token back, it's possible that your liquidity position goes back uh, to net neutral for what you put in. And when that happens, all of your fees are positive. So there is no impermanent loss. Of course, if the price kept going up and people kept taking HEX tokens out, well, then your impermanent loss would continue to increase because you're continuously losing the token that's increasing in value um, and accumulating the token that's staying the same in value, or really in this case, decreasing in value relative to the other token. 
And so here are two uh, graphs that I really like to show when talking about impermanent loss, um, especially in the context of V2 versus V3 style liquidity. These, these graphs are taken directly from the Uniswap V3 white paper. And let's just focus, let's see, let's, uh, let's just focus on this uh, one on the right uh, quickly. This, um, uh, yeah, this one right here. So each of these bars represent a different type of liquidity position. This yellow one represents a Uniswap V2 position. And then the other three represent a V3 position. So if you remember, V2 is a liquidity position from zero to infinity. Now, the x-axis is the relative price change between the two tokens, and the x the y-axis, I say the x-axis is the relative change between the two tokens, so the change in price, and the y-axis is your impermanent loss. So minus 0.2% is you had a 20% impermanent loss. You had 20% less value than if you would have held your tokens. And so you'll notice, just looking at this V2 position, it's a fairly gradual um slope down in both directions, whether whether each token is going up or down in price relative to each other. And it isn't until we get um, 10 to the third or basically a thousand X price change where we start to see like a 90 percent in permanent loss. A 10 X price change is about a 40 percent in permanent loss on both sides. Now, what you'll notice is with these positions, they're getting smaller and smaller, and the slope is increasing uh, as the alpha is decreasing. And what the alpha is for these three um, lines right here for the V3 position, that represents the wideness of your uh, V3 position. So the wider it is, the greater the alpha, the narrower it is, the lower the alpha. And so you can think of it like a price range between, let's say this alpha of 20 is a price range between plus minus 2x the price. And then the alpha of four is like plus minus 50%. And the 1.1 is like plus minus 10% of the current price. And so what you'll notice is as you narrow your bands in a V3 position, your impermanent loss greatly increases or the rate of impermanent loss greatly increases. So let's take this permanent, uh, this purple line. And, um, you know, each of these uh, positions, not yellow, represent a single position on V3. And so if we're notice at this 10X price change, uh, your V2 position had about 40% in permanent loss. Your uh, widest V3 position had about 50%. The middle narrowest had about uh, 70%. And your narrowest one had 80% in permanent loss. So what this graph is showing is as you narrow your bands um, for your V3 position, you experience in permanent loss much, much quicker. And this makes sense if you think about it because your liquidity is concentrated within a tight range. So the more the price moves within your range, the more of your tokens are being swapped with, which means the which which means you are losing the token that is increasing in value at a faster rate the narrower your LP bands are. So if you have all your liquidity within a really, really tight range and price is moving through your liquidity bands, you're swapping your tokens really, really fast. People are using your tokens to trade much faster than on a V2 style liquidity um, position. And so this gets gets at a really, really important concept. The tighter your bands are, the more impermanent loss you're going to experience I guess a better way of saying that is the faster you're going to experience a permanent loss with the price movement. Now, this other graph is showing something similar, uh, but what it's showing is on the X axis, we have time and days. And on the Y axis, we have the relative change in price. And so this is a projection of potential price actions that could be experienced with this given pair. And then the wh- that's what all these purple squiggly lines are. This black band, what it represents is the ideal liquidity uh, range to have to capture the most amount of price action over time. Now, what you'll notice is that these bands are slowly increasing over time. And what that is telling us is that ideally, if you want to capture the most price action, if you want your LP position to be in the money for the most amount of time, it would actually be increasing in range over time as the volatility is increasing or as there are more potential price actions. And all that, all that means is that like, you know, there's a potential that price really, really skyrockets up. There's a price that, um, there's a potential that price skyrockets down. There's a chance that it trades where it's at. And over time, the probability of each of these extremes occurring increases. And so you want your liquidity to be increasing in range over time. Now, let's just say we have a liquidity position that's really, really tight. These red bars right here are your liquidity position. And 
you know, for an LP position, a single one, you can't have it increase like those black lines over time. It's static in a straight line. And so if we had our position right here, all of this price action that this potential price action that's happening within these bands, you would be in the money for. But any of those potential price actions that go outside of those red bands, you are experiencing a hundred percent in permanent loss. And what that means is you have completely traded out of one of the tokens and you're left completely with the other. So let's just say uh, this is our hex USDC example. When price is going up, uh, that means the hex is going up and you're losing that token. So if the price is going higher, that means you're left with 100% USDC. So anytime the price goes above this red line, you're left 100% with USDC and zero hex. That's 100% permanent loss. Now, if it goes down, you're left with 100% hex and zero USDC. That's another 100% permanent loss. Now, if you'll notice, if we increase these bands a little bit wider, say we go down this line and we provide liquidity at this range right here around time day five is what it, what it would be on this graph. Uh, you'll notice that there are more potential price actions that our liquidity bands um, uh, connect with or our liquidity bands are in the money for. And so we are making fees for a longer period of time in this example, although the amount of fees that we're earning per trade is decreased because our bands have increased. But you'll also notice that the potential um, for experiencing 100% in permanent loss has decreased because we've captured more potential price actions. So now that we've captured more potential price actions, our chances of a permanent loss in the 100% direction in either way has decreased. And that's what this is showing here. So both of these graphs are showing about the same thing. Uh, they're showing it in different ways. And uh, the, the TLDR, the big picture um, message that I want you to take away from this uh, for a V3 style liquidity is that the tighter bands that you have, the higher percentage of your coins are being traded with, which means you're taking more bad side trades, which means you're experiencing more potential loss. Of course, the flip side to this is that you're earning more fees at the same time. So your APRs are higher and you may be outweighing that impermanent loss in the first place. Now, in this in this example, I've kind of talked about, you know, 100, you could end up with 100% HEX or 100% USDC. And so for those of you that are kind of experienced with liquidity providing already, you might already recognize that impermanent loss can work in your favor if you're trying to buy or sell your tokens. That's something we may get into a little bit later. But that is everything for this uh, lesson on impermanent loss. Guys, don't be scared about impermanent loss. Just keep in mind that is it is a risk that you're taking when you're providing liquidity. And so you know, the take home message for this is that the wider your liquidity is, the less a permanent loss you're going to be experiencing. The tighter your bands are in a V3 position, the more impermanent loss you're going to be experiencing. Now, the tighter it is because you're taking on more risk, you're earning more fees. And the wider it is that you're taking on less risk, so you're earning less fees. But keep these in mind when you're providing liquidity and always keep in mind in the back of your head, like, hey, like what kind of impermanent loss might I be experiencing or even model out that scenario? It's like, hey, if price goes this high, how much how much impermanent loss would I have? If price goes this low, how much impermanent loss would I have? And like what tokens would I be left with? And am I OK with that? Um, and so uh, this is a really, really crucial concept for you to be for you to understand when providing liquidity. Uh, so make sure to rewatch this video to understand. Um, and if you have any questions on it, make sure to ask me on Twitter or whatever, wherever you might be able to find me uh, or even ask in the comment section below. Uh, that's everything for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was um, clear and concise. And um, in the next video, we're going to be talking about some different data that is useful to uh, be able to read. So like there's different types of data in terms of choosing a, a pool to provide liquidity in, on um, whether it's a good pool, a bad pool, um, ones that we earn a lot of fees in, ones that maybe we won't earn a lot of fees in, and um, just also doing analysis via um, uh, liquidity providing. Or I guess you, a better way of saying that is, how do we do analysis on the data that we have based on what the current liquidity um, so yeah, that's today's lesson. Um, tune in tomorrow for lesson four on reading LP data. Peace out.